After a few words from Warden Johnson about doing their own time and not the other man's, Deputy Shuttleworth explained what the discipline would be like for those unwilling to take the warden's advice. Such penalties would take place in these surroundings, he said. You will receive your punishment of perhaps 10 days in isolation on a restricted diet of bread and water. That will continue while you stay in isolation. Isolation is a dark cell known here as the hole. It consists of nothing but four walls, a ceiling, and a floor. When you sleep, you do so on concrete. When a prisoner's required number of days in the hole expire, he is placed in what is known as solitary confinement. Here he enjoys the nighttime use of a bunk. He gets bread and water for breakfast, a noon meal the same as on the prison main line, and bread and water before he goes to bed. When he comes out of solitary, he goes to his regular cell and is placed in grade. Grade will consist of the following. He will have a red tag placed on his cell door which denotes third grade. He may leave his cell only to go to the mess hall. This will continue for three months. If he has not broken any rules in that time, he will be elevated to second grade. Now he may write and receive a restricted number of letters. When he has performed satisfactorily at that level for 30 days, he may be restored to first grade with full prison privileges. I wish you good luck in your new life at Alcatraz. A cheery welcome. On the other hand, not an entirely cooperative guest list, nor a very hopeful one. Of the 137 convicts on the arrival list, 83 had life sentences. Some were doing double life, and others had terms that were in effect worse. Life under federal terms can be served in a specific number of years. A 50-year sentence, for instance, takes longer, and more than 25 of those who arrived in the Rock in 1934 we're serving jolts adding up to a staggering total of years. Try looking ahead to say 40 years of servitude on this harsh little fog-bound island with maybe a third off for good behavior, if you're lucky. You get up at 6.30. At 6.55, you can leave your cell and head for your aluminum trayful of nutritionally balanced diet. At 7.30, work starts in the ships. And at the sound of one blast on a whistle, you shrug on your pea jacket and stumble down the ramps and stairways and through the metal detector to your job. If there are two blasts on the whistle, you depart without a coat. Yes, your day is punctuated by whistles, and you're under a gun every moment. At 11.20, more balanced diet, then a 30-minute rest period in your cell, which you can use to see the doctor, provided you have submitted a written request the night before. You work again until 4.15. Hash at 4.25, and at 4.50, you're locked in your cell for the night. You can watch San Francisco traffic if you're in isolation, the best vantage point, and if you have the heart for it. Senior correction officer Larry O'Brien, now retired, was assigned to Alcatraz during the height of its infamy. He recalls certain ways and means of ensuring that the security was not violated. The main way that we had of keeping up with the inmates on Alcatraz was close observation, close personal observation, a constant checking of uh, bars, doors, locks, and electrical fixtures. Uh, we checked everything. There wasn't anything that was left unchecked. And one of the things that I've always laughed about uh, in later years and I, I really used to cuss the captain on Alcatraz because he had a, a habit that I thought was rather sneaky. He, uh, he would go around and he would file a little place on a window bar or a door bar, and then he would go and get four or five officers and he would say, make a bar check and uh, give me a written report. And what I mean, that filed place on that door or that window had better be on that report. And I thought this was sneaky until I became a captain and I was wondering about my bars and I thought, you know, this is the best way I know of to check a bar. He recalls those years of his career as less than a stimulating experience. 
The chief frustration on Alcatraz, I believe, was in the uh, lack of any rehabilitation uh, effort or any education effort that was made on Alcatraz. Uh, I felt uh, very much like a zookeeper. At one small period of my life, I lived on a farm. And each morning, I used to go up and get a couple of horses and take them out and hitch them to a plow, and I'd plow the field. When I was on Alcatraz, and I used to go up and get these inmates that were working for me, and I'd take them out and work them, and I'd bring them back, and I'd put them in the cell, take, count them, take them out and feed them, put them back, count them, take them out again and uh, work them, take them back, put them in their cell, count them, take them out and feed them, bring them back, count them, and then I'd go home. I didn't learn anything except how to count and maximum security. I uh, felt that that four years of my life was an entire waste. And there was no such thing as privacy. This is another reason that I say that uh, Alcatraz took no chances, they took nothing for granted. They had a rule of silence, and uh, inmates were not allowed to talk to each other at work or not allowed to talk to each other at the meal. And of course, this is a, this is a terrible way for, for people to have to live. Some of the newcomers settled rapidly into the harsh prison routine. Machine Gun Kelly, convicted of kidnapping Oklahoma oil man Charles F. Urschel in 1933, was assigned to the paint shop. He has been quoted as saying he merely drifted along on the tide of time. Eventually, he would be transferred to Leavenworth, where he would die of a heart attack. Harvey Bailey was also convicted of the Urschel kidnapping, although his defense contended that the ransom money found in his pocket had been given to him by Kelly in payment of a debt. Whatever the case, he remained in prison until his eventual parole at 80 years of age. He was considered too hot for outside work because of his history of prison breaks and was made a cell house orderly. <laughs> 